Ah, Halloween. The pagan holiday where it's totally expected to scare the shit out of people. RPGs are no exception, of course, and there's plenty of folk running horror games this time of year. Even if most of them are using D&D Casual Edition, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Most folks tend to treat Call of Cthulhu, in my experience, as the be-all and end-all of horror gaming. And don't get me wrong, I love me some Call of Cthulhu. But it's like my stance on D&D. Call of Cthulhu is not what all horror RPGs should be like, and focusing on just that makes one miss out on quite a lot. So in keeping with my Expanding Horizons crusade that's part of this channel, I present you all with the following examples outside of the Chaosium made bubble. Number one, Inspectors. When the spooky dies on the dungeon floor. Who you gonna call? Hopefully someone who can afford a lawyer because I don't feel like getting sued by Sony. In all seriousness, Inspectors can be thought of as the spiritual successor to the very excellent Ghostbusters International. In keeping with its predecessors, it's a very crunch-like game that places as much emphasis on running the ghost hunting business as it does on the hunting itself. It's written in a very indie style, and at only 39 pages, it's a great entry to do things quickly. Number 2. Unhallowed Metropolis. So take Victorian London, throw in a few zombies, and advance the timeline to a few hundred years. That is Unhallowed Metropolis. This one I'd be willing to recommend to fans of games like Bloodborne, The Adventures of Van Helsing, or the conceptual idea of The Order 1886. Not the game, nobody's a fan of that, and nobody deserves getting that for Christmas. Mechanically, it could be considered a hybrid of ideas seen in D20 and World of Darkness, leaning more toward the latter in its context and lethality. While its writing has some layout issues, it's a fine mix of terror, corruption, and the things that drive good, civilized men mad. Number 3. Lesser Shades of Evil No, I'm not a fan of Aeos Press's work. No, not at all, not at all. Lesser Shades is a science fantasy game with a bit of post-apocalyptic worked into it. The player characters are what's known as Angelians, people who have effectively digitized their being into lost technologies, possessing spare bodies to interact with the world. Its dice system is a bit more flexible than other games, since your stats can be rolled as bigger amounts of small die or smaller amounts of large die. Now, Lesser Shades is thusly a bit more cinematic in its mechanics than in other games, but it has an undercurrent of humanity of its PCs and how immortality affects us. I could easily see this being played by fans of transhumanist stories or high-concept SF with their horror. Number 4. The Laundry Files Based on the novels by Charles Strauss, The Laundry can be thought of as a government-funded version of The Men in Black. And a bit more British, obviously. I'm partially cheating with this one because The Laundry uses the basic role-playing system, just as Call of Cthulhu does. I think this is an exception because the supernatural elements that they investigate aren't necessarily limited to the realms of Eldritch Horror. COC fans could get into this pretty easily, but I'd also recommend it for those who like the idea of mixing fantastic with a bit of police procedural. Also, unlike Delta Green, you're not completely fucked. Just mostly fucked. Number 5. Trail of Cthulhu. But wait, I hear you say. Didn't you say you were going to avoid Call of Cthulhu? Yes. Yes, I did. But this is Trail of Cthulhu, and therefore I can skirt that rule by being technically correct. The best kind of correct. Is it cheating on my part? Yes. But I feel this one gets a little overshadowed, so I'm going to force my hand here. Now instead of using the basic system that CLC uses, Trail uses the Gumshoe system by Robin Laws. Being a bit more narrativist in its approach, Gumshoe's focus on mystery solving makes it a perfect fit for the vaunted Cthulhu mythos. I'd recommend it to those who want to delve into Lovecraft, but hesitate at the whiff factor that basic role-playing's D100 system can have, and just not expect a massive amount of crunch. That said, if the Cthulhu part turns you off, but the idea of doing mysteries is still intriguing, I'd recommend looking at Esoterrorists instead. Number 6. Eclipse Phase. Eclipse Phase is a transhumanist mix of science fiction and horror, and those who cut their teeth on Shadowrun will find themselves at home with the game's emphasis on skills and equipment. Even with that, there's a strong theme of the lethality and dread in many campaigns, even if the PCs are using bodies that they upload their consciousnesses into. The only thing that might give some hesitation is, again, its use of a D100 system, albeit one that I consider slightly more forgiving than basic. Slightly. Still, I'd recommend it to those who like their SF on the harder side than a full-on operatic flair. Number 7. Degenesis. Obviously, we're talking about the Rebirth version. We don't talk about Primal Punk. Nobody talks about Primal Punk. The Genesis has a fascinating take on post-apocalypse, taking place centuries after the initial event, to the point where new societies have established themselves in place of the old. Some wanting to try and recover the old tech, others simply try and survive or even thrive in this new world. In a way, it has some structural similarity to games like 7C or Legend of the Five Rings. 
Not in a strictly mechanical sense, they don't use the same die system, but rather the game is very married with its mechanics and setting, and its heavy emphasis on ranked factions. It's a tricky recommendation, but if your players have a background with old school Fallout, Wasteland, or Stalker, you won't be too far off here. Number 9, Shadow of the Demon Lord. An apocalyptic fantasy game that can be thought of as a blending of ideas between D&D and Warhammer Fantasy. Obviously, that's selling it a little short, way short. But it's clear these two entities make up the DNA of this game. And as such, moral ambiguity and a dangerous world are central themes to the approach. Mechanically, it uses D20, but adds in a boon bane system in the form of D6 modifiers instead of static numbers. Because of this, the target number to pass a roll is largely unchanged. But the boons and banes are the bigger factor determining how easy or not the roll is. I'd highly recommend this one to fans of the Souls series, as well as fans of manga like Berserk, or the recently released, and recently triggering, Goblin Slayer. You'll find yourselves right at home here. Number 9. Chill. I'm not too proud to deny it. I first bought an earlier version of Chill because of seeing Elvira on the cover of a module. No bully, I was a younger monk. That said, I recall reading an anthology of RPG reviews a long time ago, they called Chill a horror game for the easily frightened, paraphrased. Even to this day, I find the claim laughable because Chill is not a game that's designed to scare in that sense. It's far more Hammer than Universal. The spooks can still come, mind you, but it's in a different sense. Chill was a game that was a forgotten gem for the longest time, until it ended up catching the crowdfund revival wave that's been seen for the last few years. In Chill, the PCs are members of SAVE, an acronym for Societas Argenti Vitae Eterminata also known as the Eternal Society of the Silver Way. SAVE is a secret society made from people from all walks of life, united by the need to hunt down the things that go bump in the night. Given the multi-use of humans hunting monsters that have many natural advantages against them, I'd recommend looking into this one if you grew up a fan of kitsch-style horror in the 80s, or even certain TV shows in the 90s. Number 10, Grimm. Grimm describes itself as a world of twisted fairy tales. And while that might seem a stretch to use as a hoard for a table for adults, I'd say the Matt Smith run in Doctor Who shows there's some mileage in the idea. Besides, once you take away the Disney effect, fairy tales are not as bright and chipper as they may have seen. Grimm has a very childlike mindset its approach, especially since the PCs are assumed to be kids. With a D6-based system that emphasizes teamwork, I'd recommend this one to a fan of Stranger Things, or if they're fond of games such as Undertale, or even the works of American McGee to a certain extent. Now, it could be argued that none of the games presented here are scary in the most technical sense. While that's true to an extent, I would argue that the scary factor isn't something to be used like a measuring stick. Horror RPGs, or even horror campaigns if you want to be technical on things, are better off trying to unnerve than outright scare. After all, who the hell wants jump scares at the table? I'm fairly certain you don't, which is why this video won't contain any. But regardless, whatever you end up doing, stay safe, have a happy Halloween, and keep rolling those dice. Stay frosty, folks.